So, with Windows 11 now being the default operating system in replacement of Windows 10, many users are now signing up to a Microsoft account during the setup procedure if, you say for example, you've got a new computer and you decide to set it up for the first time. Now, this can be an issue if you have forgotten your password because during the sign-up process, it will actually ask you to use a PIN to sign into Windows. So, when you actually set up a PIN, like many others, you may actually end up forgetting your password to actually reset your Windows account password when you actually do end up forgetting it or if you are prompted to actually use it during the sign-in process. Now, something to make a note of is that if you are currently using BitLocker and you've actually encrypted your system, you won't be able to actually get into the system or even get your BitLocker drive unlocked if you don't have that recovery key because you can't actually access your Microsoft account to be able to recover that recovery key. So essentially, if you don't have your recovery key, you are screwed. And unfortunately, there won't be any options that you can do to get around this. Now, there is actually some tools that you can use which are free, which I'm gonna be showing you in today's video. Again, it won't cost you a single penny and they're all safe to use. And you can use these tools to actually reset your password and then convert your account from Microsoft account into a local account if you've already been caught up in the Microsoft account trap. So without further ado, let's roll the intro and jump straight into the video. Okay, so as you can see, we're now back on our Windows 11 desktop. Now, let's say for this instance that I have actually forgotten my Microsoft account password. Now, my Microsoft account password is gonna be the one or the password that I use to actually get into Windows since I have linked my Windows account with Microsoft account. So the way you can actually check if you have done that is just simply by going down to the bottom, clicking on start, going into settings, and then go into accounts on the left-hand side. And as you can see, I have actually linked my Microsoft account with my Windows account. Now, during the sign-up process, so let's say, for example, you've just got a new PC, you've actually then signed into a Microsoft account and you've entered the password for your Microsoft account. It will then ask you to actually enter a PIN, uh, which if you go down to sign-in options right here, PIN, also known as Windows Hello. Now, if you are using a PIN, like most people, you would probably forget the password that you used to sign to Windows because you are now going to be using that PIN to actually get into the system and not really using that password. So again, Again, let's say in this instance, I've forgotten my password and I now need to reset my password to get back into my Windows account so I can access all of my data. Now, unfortunately, you will need to use a second computer to do this as we need to actually create some um, or create a bootable USB stick either um, to actually get into the PC that is having the problems. So what you need to first do, guys, is down in the description box down below, I've included two links. So first one is for Rufus. Uh, again, I'll show up at the site here. So this Rufus is a easy way of creating a USB stick to actually boot into whichever software you burn to that USB stick. And we're also going to be using some software called Hirons. Now, Hirons is also a very good piece and a very powerful tool. It includes many different tools that some uh, different creators have created. And the tool that we are going to be using today is this one here, which is the Windows Login Unlocker, which you can find under the security and password section. But there is loads of other tools in here, which also is very good if you're having other issues with your system. Now, simply download Hirons. We're going to simply go to download at the top right up here. Scroll down to the very bottom. I'm just going to click on right here where it says file name and then just click on that and then that will then start downloading. If we jump over to Rufus's website, scroll down just a little bit down here. You'll then have the download section just right here. Click on this link just here. And then as soon as you click on that link right there, it will then start downloading the latest version of Rufus, which currently today is Rufus 4.7, which was released on the 9th of April, just right here. Now, if we go back to our desktop, I've already downloaded these two files. and I've now put them on my desktop just to show you the process. Now, once you have got those two files, what we're simply now going to do is we are now going to create a bootable USB for high runs. Now, the way that you do this is we need to jump into Rufus just right here. We jump into Rufus and then just by double clicking on it, and it may then ask you if you want to make a change to your device just select yes just like this now once you're in Rufus simply go and now locate the device now you should have a USB stick plugged in at this stage and um, just so make sure you do go plug that in and then you then see that it will come up with the USB device straight at the top it will then say boot selection so now we're simply going to click on select just on the right side here click on select and we're now going to go locate that high runs boot CD ISO file so again I put that on my desktop so just click on this file right here and then click on open. Now, as you can see, um, what you need to actually do at this stage is you need to actually hold down Alt and then press E. And then as, if we just do that again, just like this, you'll then see that it will then change to BIOS or UEFI. Now, the reason I recommend that you do this is because you'll then need to be able to boot into either BIOS or UEFI rather than being able to just boot into one, um, which again, if I just swap it back here, you'll see that Rufus will automatically do that based on the partition scheme that we use. However, if you hold down Alt and press E, it will then actually allow you to use both um, system types as well. So it just saves you having to uh, face that problem if you are using either BIOS or 
UEFI if you have a newer system. Now what I'm now going to do is on the volume label, let's go and leave that as HBCD. You can name that if you wish to. It just it's just again it's just up to you so you know what the USB is or what that specific USB you are using is. Um, but I normally leave it as default just because I know HBCD means high runs. And then once you've done that, just simply going to hit start at the very bottom. It will then give you a warning just saying that Rufus has detected the ISO that you are using contains a UEFI bootloader that has been revoked and will produce a security violation screen. So again, don't worry about this. Just simply click on OK just down at the bottom. And it's then going to ask if you want to destroy all the data on your USB. Again, just be warned that you will use all the data on this because it will also format your USB before writing this Hiram's boot CD to it. So it's going to be hit on OK just right here. Click on that, and again, it's just going to now start deleting the partitions and formatting that USB for us. So that'll take a few minutes, so I'll let that carry on, and I'll be back with you guys in just a sec. Okay, so now that Rufus has actually copied all the data to the USB, you are now simply going to need to safely eject that USB by going down to the bottom right-hand corner of your Windows device, uh, and then you're going to simply right-click on this USB option here, and you're then going to simply eject the USB safely. That just avoids any corruption on your USB stick. Now, once that's been done, you're then going to unplug your USB, and I'm going to go back to the computer that is now having the issue. You're going to unplug in the USB and you are then going to need to shut down that computer and then boot into that USB stick. And then once you're boosted into it, it will then boot into Hirons. So let's now swap into Hirons and show you what to do from there. Okay, so as you can see, we're now back into our Windows Hirons boot CD environment. Now what we're not going to do is we're going to simply go down to the start menu in the bottom left hand corner and you're then going to jump into all programs and you'll then have a folder list come up like so. We're then going to jump into the security and we're then going to go into passwords just right here and you'll then have the Windows Login Unlocker, which is just right at the very bottom. Select on this, and it's then going to do a quick scan of your drive. Now, if you do go into this, and all of a sudden you get an error saying that your environment or system could not be found, what you then need to do is, if you actually go into this PC, you need to make sure that your uh, CD or your main C drive, your operating, where your operating system is currently stored, is not using BitLocker. Again, if you are using BitLocker, which I mentioned at the start of the video, you are going to be out of luck, because again, if you can't get into your Microsoft account, you won't be able to un actually unlock the drive, which is the reason as to why we're doing this. But if you can unlock the drive and you're able to get into your Microsoft account then you won't actually need to do this process at all. So again if you cannot see your C drive you won't be able to access it and unfortunately that will mean that your data has been lost. So if you are like me and you don't use BitLocker you can simply just come out of this and again back into the Windows login unlocker you'll then see your list of accounts. Now as you can see right here this is the account which I've set up which is actually for the Microsoft account that I've created in Windows and you can sell that by the live ID section and that currently says yes and it also says that we are also using a pin now what we're now going to do is going to go down to the right and we're going to click on where it says reset stroke unlock click on this and it's then going to give you a warning just mention you that your um, account is is actually associated with a windows live account or microsoft account which is actually associated with and it'll show your email address and then it will then give you an option to reset the password and transfer the account to a local account which is perfect exactly what we want to do so this is the procedure it does to be able to get back into that windows account so we're going to click on ok just like this give that a moment and there you go and it will then say password has been reset successfully so now that has been done we're simply now going to come out of this piece of software and you're now going to simply reboot the computer and then go back into windows so i'm now going to reboot this and i'll be back in windows in just a sec okay so we're now back on our windows 11 pc and you can now see that it's now asking me just to simply sign in as soon as you get to the login screen so i'm going to just click on sign in just like this now what we're now going to do is if we just jump into the start menu here go into settings and if we then just go into the accounts section um, you'll kind of see that it is now a local account and it is obviously saying up here it is an administrator but Windows is kind of stuck in this sort of process at the moment where it still thinks it's kind of a, uh, a Microsoft 365 Windows account but it's not so we actually need to just quickly unlink this so the way to do that is to actually if we just click on right here where it says your info like this and you'll then see that there's an option here set that says stop signing into Microsoft apps automatically so we just click on this right here and you'll then see straight away the account will then suddenly switch from a Microsoft email address to local accounts this now means that we are now fully 100% a local account and no longer a Microsoft account if we then just go back to accounts you can also see the same procedure on this screen as well now something to also mention is that you if you are actually signed into any applications like for example like Steam or even if you've 
signed into, say for example, if you've got safe passwords in your browser, then all of a sudden you might find that you won't be able to no longer access those passwords. Now, the reason for that is because your passwords are actually encrypted in Windows using your account password. But now because you have removed that password, it just basically means that it also removes the data because obviously you no longer have a password in place. So I hope that's helped you guys out there. If it has, please smash that like button to get this video into the YouTube algorithm. Please also hit that subscribe button to help me grow the channel and to also show your support for the channel. And also please leave your comments down below if you're having any issues or if there is something that you may have come across, probably leave me a comment down in the section down below and I'll try and help you out where I can. You can also check me out on other socials like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Again, links for all those will be down in the description box down below. And you can also check out my new website, which is over on matthewstechhub.com. And you've also got a Discord server where you guys can come and join and come and chat and also come say hello in the Discord channel. But with that always, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you then. Bye for now.